Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I got another good one. I got a 2008 Honda Odyssey behind me and well, I'm gonna show you what's going on with it. It's a lot easier to show you than tell you. So let's take a look. So what happened to this one guys is this poor lady was uh, driving down on my street here, uh, literally on the main street and someone came out of uh, an alley or was trying to go into an alley. I'm not exactly sure what happened and they wound up hitting her in the front. Now, I've had to set this car on blocks that you guys see right here because the suspension is just sitting way too low. They managed to put the spare on it in order to get it here to me, but let's take a look and see what happened. Now, this thing is pretty destroyed. It needs some severe body work, but for right now, is the car's steering wheel is off by, I think, 180, and it's just not wanting to turn very easy, and it's making a bunch of crunching noises. So let's go ahead, get this thing lifted up into the air, remove the tire, and see what's going on. Okay guys, so we got the car up in the air and I'm sure you guys will see it in the time lapse. This wheel is cocked in pretty bad. So we have some pretty severe damage here. Now I tried to shake the tire back and forth to see if anything was loose. Obviously it's so jammed up that it's not really moving. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off the tire and let's see what's going on. Well, I got the tire off and it's not looking pretty now. This looks pretty bad. As you guys can see, the strut that's there is supposed to be more towards ah, about right here. So we definitely got something pushed in. It looks like the car got hit right about here, pushing it backwards, and the strut bent. Now, the reason why the strut bent, especially where it bent, is if you guys look at this here. Now, it's going to be hard because i got to angle you in. Uh, this part right here that bolts up to the knuckle is reinforced. So it's a pretty thick steel here. And then this part here is not really that thick. So the path of least resistance would... Be to break right here or crease up right here now this thing is still probably under pressure uh, so I'm not gonna touch it too much but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna remove the strut now it's hard to do this step by step with you guys because I got to be extra careful on this strut because this thing could go and explode at any time they are under some pressure um, but just to kind of clue you guys in here the way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to remove these two bolts here um, I don't know how well the camera picks that up but you got those two bolts right here that I'm going to be removed, this one and this one. I'm going to get this uh, caliper bracket hanger or this caliper line hanger out of the way here, guys. And then what I got to do back here is remove that uh, stabilizer link, uh, which I do believe made it. We'll check and see if it survived. But even if it did, more than likely, it's probably bad. So, you know, we're not too worried about that right now. The main focus that this customer wants is to make sure that the car is able to drive and nothing else is damaged. So let's begin. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm probably just going to time lapse it. Uh, this is not really a how to. This is more of like, you know, just showing you what I do here. Um, so this is not really a really good video for referencing how to do this. I'm going to be just kind of showing you guys real quick and then time lapsing. All right, guys, so I went ahead and I got everything dislocated down here for the strut, and you guys can get a much better look at it now. You guys can see this thing is just completely bent. I mean, this thing took a pretty hard hit. Um, I was a little worried because I thought this might be under a lot of spring tension and may want to pop out at me, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, the worst of it was just getting the bolts out from the knuckle. I had to kind of beat them out, you saw in the time lapse. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and lower the car and we're going to be working on the bolts that are up top. Now these Hondas have them kind of hidden in the cowl. So let me show you guys that stage. Okay guys, so now we got the car lowered and what we're looking for on the cowl is you see these little circular cutouts. Now these are specifically put there so you can get access to the top strut bolts that mounted onto the body. And the way these work, now I love the way Honda does this because some Toyotas and some previous Hondas, the whole windshield wipers had to come out and the cowl, everything had to come off to be able to get access to this. So this is a very nice feature. All you do is take like a flathead screwdriver or in this case, my pocket knife, just get up underneath there. And what you're gonna wanna do is just pop up the little covers 
Sometimes they could be a little brittle, but for the most part, they do come off. I think the trickiest one is this one because they put the little pull tab towards the back. Um, usually on this one, I use a little bit of a pick. Let me see if I can grab my pick and get in there. So for that last one, it's kind of hard. Grab yourself a pick, kind of like a angle pick like this one. And what you want to do is just get in there and just try to force it underneath and give it a turn. Uh, this stuff sometimes can be brittle if it's never come off. These are original. So there you go. Now, once we get those off, you are pretty much set to go. All you got to do is line up and get in there. Now, I'm going to try to zoom you guys in here. I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, but if you guys can see in there, there's one bolt. And then if we kind of zoom you guys up here, and this is hard. The camera won't pick it up, guys. Um, there's your other bolt. And then the third bolt would be right there. So sorry if I made anyone dizzy. I know that uh, can definitely make your head hurt, especially when you move the camera that quick. So now that you've got access to your bolts, you're gonna wanna take your socket with an extension, get in here, take it off, and then the strut itself will drop from the bottom. Now I'm gonna go ahead and time-lapse this so you guys can see. All right, guys, so we went ahead and we got our strut off, which is right here, and then here's our new one. You guys can clearly see this one took a beating. Uh, it's pretty bent up. Uh, it's a lot worse when you take it off compared to when it was inside the car. Um, now that we got that stage done, what we're going to do is we're going to reinstall our new one. Um, I'm going to probably just time lapse it just because, like I said earlier, this isn't really a step-by-step how-to on this car. It's more of like, hey, look what happened. Let's get it fixed and let's see what else is going on with it because I think this thing might need some more work. Uh, so I'm going to time lapse you guys on this one. Uh, and we're just going to take that, put it in. Now, it's very difficult to install the new ones on these, especially when it comes to the top portion with those bolts. As you guys saw, that cowl is in the way. So a magnet here and a couple angular, you know, sockets will definitely help if you got like a swivel socket, something of that nature. That'll definitely be your best friend here. So let me get you guys set up and I'll show you the process. All right, guys, so you guys just saw the time lapse of me installing everything. It went pretty smoothly. It was rather difficult up top. Uh, you got to use a magnet to be able to get them in there. I don't know if you guys kind of saw, I laid the socket down with the bolt as I pushed the strut up and then it laid right on top of the stud and I was able to put it on the first bolt that way. Now, it's best to have two people when you do this because it's very difficult to hold up one hand here and then reach over. But, you know, since I work alone, I've, you know, figured out little tips and tricks and stuff like that to do this by myself. But if you can, have somebody help you when you do this. Um, after I got those top bolts uh, settled in over there, I bolted up my strut to the knuckle, put in my brake hose holder, and I reattached the stabilizer link. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it an inspection. I got to do a couple measurements here now. I don't have an alignment machine at my shop. That would be the best way to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple measurements for reference and just kind of see if we possibly have anything else bent. But the only thing the customer wanted me to do was put on the strut and see if it would fix it. Now, it's definitely an improvement because this wheel is back in alignment. And when I move the wheel back and forth, I can kind of see the corresponding wheel on the other side. It does match up. So I'm actually thinking the strut was the worst of it. This thing probably will need an alignment. Uh, I know it needs a stabilizer link, but they have declined to replace it. 
Uh, they just want to put the strut on it, so there's nothing I could really say or do to that fact. So I was just put the old one back on. I'm gonna check out the rest of the suspension here, make sure everything is good. And then once I get the wheel on, I take it off for a drive and I do my measurements, I'll kind of come back and I'll let you guys know what happened with this one. All right, guys, so I got the update on the Honda Odyssey behind me. Uh, after uh, the last clip, I went ahead and I put the tire on. I did a few measurements uh, on the passenger side and I cross-referenced those to the driver's side just to make sure things lined up correctly. Control arm, ball joint, uh, tie rod, everything checks out. Uh, the only thing that it does need is a stabilizer link and the customer is declining to do a stabilizer link on it. So I just went ahead and I used the old one on there, which is kind of uh, funny because it's missing one on the right side. I let the guy know. He had no comment on it. He just said, hey, I just need the car to run, you know. So that's pretty much uh, my end of the bargain right there. I just put the strut on, and uh, that's what he wants. That's what he gets. I can't really force him to do anything else. Um, I took it out for a test drive after all the measurements, and I put the wheel on, and it actually drives really, really good for a car that, you know, came in with the tire uh, pushed in all the way. So I'm actually surprised. Uh, I mentioned to the guy he might want to get an alignment. I did notice it has a little bit of a pull, but nothing got bent. I'm assuming when it hit whatever it hit or whatever hit it, uh, it just kind of pushed the alignment off track a little bit. Sometimes that does happen. Uh, I mentioned uh, to the gentleman to take it in to get an alignment. It would probably be best for him. And uh, he just said, okay, sure thing. Uh, if he does it, who knows? Um, so other than that, she's all set. She's ready to hit the road. And I do want to say this, guys, now, I know a lot of you are probably going to say, well, why don't you replace a stabilizer link and this and that. Uh, the thing is, here in Illinois, they don't really have any laws that, you know, mechanics can, you know, make customers or hold their cars if they don't do certain repairs. It's not like New York where you can fail an inspection and then you have to do the work. Here, all they do is checks every two years for smog emissions. There's no real safety inspection. So, unfortunately, there are cars like this on the road that are missing pieces. Like, this one's missing a stabilizer link. Now, that's not really going to hurt anything if it's missing it and it's not equipped on it. But there's no real safety check here in Illinois, unfortunately. It is what it is. Um, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and ship this car out. Uh, she's all done. I just want to say thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. My channel has been growing, and I really want to thank everyone out there watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. It definitely does help. So if you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. It will help my channel grow. Uh, I just want to say hope you guys have a great day, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.